Psychoactive substance consideration. Hello. I'll take the reporter's read and if there's any questions. This has been workshopped, hasn't it? This has been extensive workshop, isn't it? Today? Yeah. Um, I, I believe that we have extensively workshopped this. It's only just uh, um, mentioned, so I'm happy to move the recommended resolution. Thank you. 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 Thank Yes, so similarly to the last uh, the last item, uh, take uh, take it as read and happy to take any questions if we have any. But again, we went through a workshop um, on this. I just have one, um, Hadley, just to follow up from your conversation with Councillor Truman about the naming of, of independent um, businesses. I just just seeking some clarification around that. I didn't quite understand. So through you, Mr. Chair. So at the workshop, uh, Councillor Truman did raise um, the possibility of adding two um, venues out in uh, Tihoi Tavern and Ned's Place. Um, we worked through a few possible issues that could come out of that. Um, one is we, we didn't see it as the best idea naming two individual venues in a policy that's going to stand for the next three years. Uh, but I suppose we also, uh, she then followed it up with possibly adding um, a generic area in and around those venues, which I also think could cause some concerns. So, I mean, it, it is a draft. It is only a draft policy at the moment. Um, if if those venues or anyone interested was wanting to submit uh, during the, the process uh, to have that added, mm. um, that's something that could be looked at. But I just think at the moment, um, in its current format, it probably wasn't all that wise to add uh, individual venues um, to them. Thank you. Just one point of just reiteration from my uh, perspective. The, the percentage that goes comes back to the area is actually going back to the regional area, not the district area, correct? That's right. It is, So yes. it is conceivable that this district won't see no money whatsoever. Well, that, that's not no different to what it currently is, but um, the changes are. So at the moment, uh, money that's generated is distributed nationwide. So if it's a society that's based out of Auckland, They've got machines throughout New Zealand. They could uh, put that money wherever they would like throughout the whole country. New legislation's come through that's going to limit that to a regional area. So actually, it's, be it's better in the long run. Um, sure, it may not necessarily go to the district, um, but it's more likely to now that that's restricted to the region. The region, um, and that percentage is also going up to 42% over the next five years as well. So there will be more money coming back to the region over the next five years. To the region. To yes. the region, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Just, just that's a clarification. If a venue has 18 and gets sold, those 18 go with the business. The new venues will be nine, but a venue that, say, sells to someone else, it's got 18, that 18 stays. So what, what has been added to the uh, policy is a relocation policy. So if those venues uh, were outside the current um, maps that we have attached to the policy, which stipulate where new venues can can open, if there was a venue outside of that area that had 18 machines, it could be possible that they could relocate to within the maps and take their 18 machines with them. Um, but obviously all of that is still has to be done within the cap that's operating at that point. Um, and if it was a new venue to open and a new business altogether, it would be limited to nine. Yes. Thank you. And just a couple of uh, more questions in the actual draft that you have there on page three. Um, 8.2, uh, we say, and it is generally expected that the patrons would be restricted to persons 18 years or older. Isn't that a bit ambiguous or um, a bit loose? And shouldn't we not just say um, persons over 18? Uh, well, that, that's just a carryover from the previous policy. So certainly, I mean, it, it could be. Um, but I suppose um, if, if there was a venue that's not necessarily an 18 plus venue, i.e. a bar or something like that, it's conceivable that they may want to operate machines, but I can't think of many instances where that would be the case. Um, so it, it's a, at your discretion as to whether we, we could change that wording. And then second point being on the same page on 12.1.6, 12, 12 
we talk about um, evidence of distance to any educational facilities, community facilities. But then you turn the page and you have the blue part, right, and part of the library and community services and parks and God knows what else. So presumably this will all be looked at before it goes out to public consultation? The actual consent that they come well, to council for? Well, it, no, that's what it, yeah. So the application for consent, as part of that process, they have to provide evidence of their distance to all of those sorts of uh, facilities. Uh, so that's part of the consent process, which we then assess uh, before, uh, the, before the council so would issue okay, consent so to that. Done at that stage, not, not now. That's right. right. right yes. Yeah. Thank you. Chairman, I'd like to move the suggested recommended resolution. I'm one of the silly people who put my name to it. <laughs> no, you sign it, you own it. <laughs> okay, thank you, Rob. Um, was, well, now I've lost my page. Um, as um, as the council might re might recall, uh, we've been developing a procurement policy um, for some time. Um, this has been to audit committee, um, and now it comes to the council um, for approval. Th remember, this is the policy. There is will be hanging off the bottom of that. We're developing at the moment a uh, manual uh, process document, but this is the broad policy. And as you'll see by the um, by the amendments, we've incorporated, uh, as was requested by the committee, the changes that were recommended by the Office of the Auditor General. Um, so. On that basis, then I'm happy to answer any questions. But um, I, in principle, have no problem with it as long as somewhere along the line, whether it's a part of policy or with what goes underneath the policy, we ensure that there is um, um, something about non-performance and non-compliance obligations. In Non non compliance by whom? The tender or the supplier or, or the actual. Okay, so well, that's probably actually the third part of sorry, fourth part. So we have a we have the policy. We'll have a a document that manages the actual process. A tender comes in. Um, it will result in a contract with a supplier, usually under NZS one. Whatever it is, the contract, of course, has lots of stuff in it about non-performance of the contract. So it would be actually the contract itself um, that would govern non-performance. Our policy will, our, our procurement manual uh, will say, that in your, in any contract, you need to have provisions for making sure that we can enforce the contract against. Uh, contractor. But the actual provisions will be in the contract itself that comes right at the end of the process. As long as you're comfortable with that. Um, um, through the chair, Rob, I just I went through and compared our risk and audit notes with the you know the ones that the audit review had made um, recommendations for. Can you just um, confirm that all the changes they ask for are in here because this is an overriding policy but the recommendations from the audit and risk people actually were quite specific. I just need the level of comfort that the links are going to be there because I can't see that from the big policy thing. Well I suppose what, what, they, what they've said is um, I suppose it's a, 
it's a wait and see to some extent. What they've said is that it should either be in here or in the manual um, and or cross-referenced. So um, we have put the ones that need to be in here in here. We put the cross-references that they've recommended, but there are some of the items that they've recommended which will appear in the <coughs> manual itself. Okay, no, sure, that's fine. Um, and, and, I, and the manual is going to come back to the <coughs> risk, audit. audit and risk committee um, for, for a check. Um, and so when that happens, we'll make sure we identify each of the things that um, haven't been covered in this document. Oh, that's great. And I, I guess it's just a point from me. Um, and Audit New Zealand made this comment, staff education and training so that they're fully aware of the op we're all up to speed with this will be really important. That's um, it's part of our part of our program. Yeah. Once we've developed, we've finalised because we're about three quarters of the way there, I suppose. The manual won't be rolled out. Uh, sorry, will be rolled out in conjunction with the training program. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll move the suggested resolution. Yep, number three, is it, I've got two questions. One is just to do with the wording. And the first one is, and I've raised this when we were going through this before, I'm very, it says here, if the service is valued between 10 and 50,000, we have to have, where possible, three written quotes. But when we're looking at above 50,000, it will be subject to a competitive procurement process. Where is the difference in that? I mean, surely it should state what it actually means. Um, through you, through you, your worship, the the it'll be described in the manual. But in short, um, three th three quotes is a is one version of of a competitive, it was not a, actually even a competitive process. Three quotes is just three individual people saying this is what they're going to offer and it's a, uh, it's for comparison purposes. Um, there are a number of ways that competitive processes can occur. Only one of them is a tender. Um, and the gov one of the things that we um, will use as a cross-reference is the government Put out by the Office of the Audit General, I think, recommendations on sorry, state, is it State Services Commission. The central government have a um, procurement recommendation manual, and I think there's probably five or six different competitive processes that they talk about. So in the manual, sorry, in the in this policy, we didn't want to restrict ourselves to only using one type of competitive process above 50,000. We wanted to make sure we can adopt um, any of the range of competitive processes. The most common one we will use will be the, the simple old tender. That's mm -hmm. probably the most common, but there are, um, as I said, a raft of possibilities. Um, and so the policy is designed to allow us to use any of those. The important word to think about is competitive. It has to be a competitive process um, above 50,000. That's my point. Why not have the same to do with between 10 and 50? Why doesn't it just start at 10 if, that, cost. if that's the issue? Cost. Oh, sorry. I've Sim simple answer is cost. cost. It costs a lot to run a tender process or any other form of a competitive process, whereas three written quotes can be done quite quickly with a far reduced cost. It, it, Mr. Chairman, just a couple of things. We go down to procedures, operational guidelines. I'm trying to work out which words are supposed to be in or not. In the first line, it, it says, they shall, and it uses the word sets rather than set. It's in black. You've got an S on it. Yes, that and then if we go down three lines down, these guidelines will be, have been, is still included, which is correct. I would suggest will be, because have been hasn't been ruled out. You will circle that. Yes, it's crossed out. Yeah. Yes, it's crossed out there. Not mine. Line through it. Um, as, as I, through you, Mr. Chair, as I read it, um, what what that clause reads at the moment, I'm reading the cross out properly, operational guidelines shall support the policy. 
they shall set out the issues to be considered, etc. These guidelines will have been prepared with reference to the Office of the Auditor General publication. Why is it? Well, okay, once again, I'm confused. It's got the words be there, will yeah. be. Cut the word be out. Yeah. Sorry. Cut the word be out. Cut the word be out. Well, otherwise, we end up with the document printed with that in it. Sorry, what should. Uh, yeah. What should happen is the I think the words have been that follow will be and that line should be should come, should have come out. These guidelines will be prepared with reference to. Any other questions or queries? Rob? I move, Your Worship. Yep. Yep. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Adoption of the social distance rule. Good afternoon, Your Worship, Council. What you have probably uh, already read is a uh, want the Fire um, Authority Royal Fire Plan for 2014 approved. Please, we've done some alterations to it. Um, gone through the Emergency Management Committee. The big change in this plan from previously is we have included a tactical plan for. Um, Nature's flame sawdust pile, and that's the big alteration. To Could it. you just repeat that? Uh, what was that statement just made? A tactical plan for nature's flame sawdust pile yes. out on Rickmore yeah. Road. Yeah. Yeah. Um, firstly, I'd just like to commend the staff for all their work in, in um, getting this to us in its final. And, and as you say, it's been through the emergency management committee, so this is purely just. For admin and yes. statutory purposes, so therefore I'd like to move the suggested resolution. I'll see you very, very quick question. Just on that, it was an interesting novel to read that day and night. Um, the the uh, 307,000 cubic metres of material that we currently have there on Rackham area, is there a maximum that do you perceive that uh, is a safe maximum? Because you, you don't actually state that in here. Yeah, none. <laughs> Through the chair. Um, this is a very interesting question. What What's safe and what's okay. unsafe? What we do have, uh, that's why we've done a tactical plan for this, because if that pile did for any reason um, combust, then it would take uh, many months for it to go out. Um, hence the tactical plan talks about how we're going to deal with that. Um, I, I don't believe... You know, a metre of sawdust has some issues, so this large pile, all it will do is smoke for some considerable time, and um, that may cause an issue, yes. So um, getting rid of a pile of that degree, we've talked to Nature's Flame about it. Um, it does come under our Resource Act as to how big they can have it. Um, there seems to be some very um, slim guidelines from the National Royal Fire Authority as to what these piles should do. Sort of a little bit different if we were dealing with tyres, very clear on what we can do with those, but with yeah. sawdust it's not quite so clear, it's quite vague. Okay. Okay, thanks. <coughs> Thank you.